What is up, Glory Gang? Welcome back to another episode of the Glory Boys Podcast. Yo! I'm one of your hosts, Austin. And I'm Darren. And in today's episode, we have a very special guest. His name is Levy Ventura Yep. from Lincoln, Nebraska. We've been friends with Levy for a few years now. Mm -hmm. And uh, Levy is an amazing, super talented photographer and videographer that got his business started at only 19 years of age. Yeah. So in this episode, we're going to walk you through how he started his business, how he got teamed up with a pretty incredible client opportunity, really a dream client at the ripe old age of 19 and how he's been able to scale his business as a freelancer while being full-time in school. Yeah, he's worked with incredible brands, incredible athletes and people, a lot of sports, and just honestly all around such an amazing photographer and videographer and storyteller. And I'm super inspired by him. We hope you guys are too. Now let's roll that intro. All right, fam, we are back at the GV Studios Yo. here for another episode of the Glory Boys podcast. Very excited about today's guest. Yes, sir. We have our friend Levy Ventura mm-hmm. from the great town of Lincoln, Nebraska Ooh. with us here on the Glory Boys podcast this morning. How you doing? I'm chilly, but you know, it's, we're good. We're yeah. good. God is good. I'm awake today. It's good. Yeah, you are. It's a little cold in here. We're having the furnace fixed, so... Mm-hmm. We got yeah. space heaters and uh, yeah, they're they're warming up our legs right now. It's kind of yeah, nice. That's nice. Can you feel it? I can feel a little bit. Our yeah. black sweats. Yeah. Ooh, all getting warmed up. Yeah, we're cool. dressed warm, so we're good. Well, Levy is an incredible photographer, videographer. He's really just like crushed and dominated Lincoln, um, and I would say Nebraska. And the things that we've seen, we met you like really early on when we started our company, how did, how did we first connect? So I went to like one of the first openings of my city at like yeah the convention No, the Thompson Center. Yeah, yeah the Thompson that was Center. on UNO's campus. Yeah, mm-hmm. and yes. I was like, that was back in the day where I would just vlog everything for I remember fun that. And just practice videography and editing and yeah. B-roll stuff and stuff like that. And I just saw you guys were like, I think it was like the Mark IV. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> it was like I had the Canon and 70D at that time, so I was like still big uh, Canon fanboy. And I saw you guys roaming around. I was like, "These guys are real, the real deal." And then you came up to me. He's like, "Hey, what's that?" I was like, "No way! No way! This guy's <laughs> talking to me right now." I still have the clip on YouTube where it's yeah. just like I was like nonchalantly recording you while yeah. you were looking at my camera. I was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah I remember that." Awesome. <laughs> oh, dude, that was a long time ago. Dang, 2017. Yeah, it was like fall of 2017. It was yeah. my freshman you, year. Yeah, because you were coming to Omaha. You said you stopped by. You went to the zoo that day. Mm-hmm. And you were vlogging the whole day. Because mm-hmm. I, I remember watching the vlog later when you put it out. But yeah, so since then, man, like you've just been crushing, like doing all kinds of things, like literally all across the board, oh, yeah. um, as we have too. And we've had opportunities to work together over the mm-hmm. years. Um, we've called you down from Lincoln to come, you know, shoot with us on different occasions and it's been awesome. It's mm-hmm. been fun uh, keeping this relationship going, but um, yeah, what's kind of, I, I would love to just hear a little bit and help the listeners understand kind of where you came from and where you are now, just like in your journey um, running your company. Oh, tough. <laughs> uh, well, honestly, I'm still learning everything that takes to be an actual like business because like I started this as a hobby you know like as one does picking up a camera or whatever I was like oh this is fun I'll take photos or whatever and then I was like six seven years ago maybe Mm -hmm. just for funsies I didn't take the business part seriously until like two years ago and then I was like whoa there's a lot there's like the whole 50 percent of being a photo video business that I didn't learn about mm-hmm. or know yeah. that I had to learn about. And I was like, whoa. So like you guys have been very keen on like, like I just text you guys sometimes like, hey, can, can I get your contract? Because I need <laughs> to know what that looks like. <laughs> it's like. I just don't know. It's not like it teaches in school or something. Right. So yeah. it's like random stuff like that. I have to look up. So like, oh, like how much should I charge? Like blah, 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 blah. Like what are steps to process? Like to protect myself. Well, something like that. So like all that, I'm still in the process of trying to figure out and fully do, hopefully by next year. But mm-hmm. as of now, I'm like in that stage of like almost being like an actual business. But what, So in that process of growing and as you're continuing to build your business and getting more clients and shooting more weddings or whatever you are doing um, that's coming your way, what was like the biggest challenge that you kind of overcame in that process? So, you know, things can get intimidating as you're building your company. What was yeah. like that big thing that you're like, man, I'm so glad I figured this thing out. It's still something I'm 
still trying to work through it's mainly just like imposter syndrome Mm. because like it's tough still being like a student and trying to do like freelance on the side like seeing what you guys do and then like I do something like closely similar or like whoever else I'm like oh cool I did a cool project (laughs) like somebody else and then the next day I have to sit in class for like 10 hours or whatever I'm like (laughs) so I'm not a professional yet but like I have people who trust in me enough to be like hey you are you're a working professional. Like, yeah, sure, you go to school the next day, but you are a working professional. Yeah, 100%. So just having the confidence to call myself that is yeah. the biggest thing I'm trying to work through yeah. right now. So That's good. It's <clears throat> awesome. So you weren't born in the U.S. I was not. Huh? So where were you born? Bro, I was born in Saudi Arabia of all places, dude. For some reason, that's just where my parents met. They're both Filipinos. So like at some points, we all just try to find each other kind of thing. Like you just know. Where, where like where the community is that's where they met we moved my mom and I moved to the Philippines my dad stayed back to work and I was in the Philippines for a couple of years moved back to Kuwait which is around Saudi Arabia stayed there for a couple of years and then we finally moved to the U.S. when I was like seven so it's been it's been a journey dude it's always weird looking back at it looking back at that and like seeing where I am now it's like I who would have thought like, like I'd one day pick up a camera and just start working a business or whatever from where I started in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Like the main reason we moved was like we're a Christian family and like if you're in Saudi Arabia, it's not like really like it's looked down upon kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So like if we stayed, who knows what I'd be doing right now, yeah. dude. Yeah. Probably be wow. like an engineer or something. Wow. <laughs> I don't know. But dude, yeah. that's, that's so in- <clears throat> inspiring. I think, yeah, no matter like what, what your beginnings are, like what your family goes through. Like, it's just cool to see you guys came out the other side and and now you guys are, you know, crushing life in the U.S., being Trying. awesome. Yeah, no, my my whole family's back in Texas and it was like the move to Nebraska. I was like, I'm going to figure out who I am <laughs> apart from my family. And then it has helped because be, before then, as much as I love my parents, they're a little helicoptery sometimes, especially I'm the oldest. So it's like their first run of kids. They're like, oh, I'm shelter protect you and stuff and mm-hmm. teach you everything so, like i didn't do like my first load of laundry till i got here like my freshman <laughs> year in college dude. i don't want to yeah, be honest bro. about that yeah so then like that's been very keen on like just who i am as a person now just like growing apart from my family which is something i had to do so yeah well it sounds like you have awesome parents too i love uh, them very much and like now it's just like i miss them just because like i'm not around them 24 mm-hmm. 7 so, like next week i'm like i'm going home for thanksgiving yeah kind of thing yeah like, i will be with you guys which has been awesome in our relationship with like parent and son kind of thing. It's like, yeah, <laughs> the oldest is like, there's a lot of like pressure to do good and be good kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. So yeah, it's been, <laughs> it was tough growing up, but now, now it's been, it's been good. It's awesome, awesome. bro. What drove you to pick up a camera for the first time? <sighs> so it's always, it's one of those things that's just been around my life. It's like randomly, like parents had a camera for like family random pictures and mm-hmm. stuff before phones got really good and stuff like that so i think it was this on one trip i had an ipod touch yeah the ones with the camera yeah mm-hmm. and one day i was looking out a window on our trip from like the grand canyon and i was like that sunset looks so cool i was like dad stop the car <laughs> and then he like pulled over to the side i ran up to like the edge of the road and i was like I was like, yo, this is so cool. I was like, look at what I did. Wow. And my dad was like, that's actually really good. You should get that printed out and like have your signature as a watermark so no one steals <laughs> it. That's awesome. I'll, I'll, did you I'll do see that? if I can send it to you guys. It's like, did I was you like, watermark it? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Let's go. I did. I was like 11 with like the crabbiest handwriting. <laughs> and I put it like on the top left corner. I was like, levy. <laughs> nice. But that was like the. Probably like the first time I like I fell in love with being able to take a photo and like capture a moment because like I'll forever remember that moment with my family on the trip mm. just from that sunset photo and I was like and then from then on I, it's kind of just been like a forward progress of like learning about cameras watching stuff on YouTube and when I got to high school I was lucky enough to have it was like a media class something like that I forget the name mm-hmm. but they had the T5Is and stuff like that, Ooh, you know, like for video and yeah. a pretty good photo. Uh-huh. Yeah. And like my love for that, like the bigger high end stuff, like rose even more and more. And <laughs> I tried buying my first camera, but I wasn't super uh, attention to detail. And I thought I was buying the same one as the schools, the T5I, mm-hmm. but I didn't know there was a model just called the T5. Yep. 
And there's a big difference oh, yeah. for between sure. the two. 100%. So I thought I was getting a super cool video camera with a flip screen and it came. I was like, what is this? It's like uh, it's super tiny. There's uh, no flip yeah. screen. We can't relate to the this story sucks. at all. No. We've never bought a camera thinking it was a different one. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> when we first started our company, I had an A7S II Ooh. and that was it. We had like a couple <laughs> Canon cameras, but they didn't shoot great video. Yeah. So we were like, we need something to match this camera. So we went out to buy just an A7S because that's all that we could afford. Yeah. And we went and met this guy at Dairy Queen or something, <laughs> sat down, McDonald's, yeah. <laughs> sat down, like looked at the camera and I like looked at it. Everything looked good. So we bought it and, and I had, he left. So I had no idea about Sony. I used Canon my Canon. whole life. Exactly. So I'm like, yo, like your Dude. Sony A7S2 is cool. I like it. I don't really know how to use it. I just know the images that we get from it are really great. It's solid. And the video is incredible. So I knew that I needed to jump on that so that we can have two people running the same cameras mm -hmm. and have to match color. We tried that. It does not work. Um, mm -hmm. So we are meeting with this guy. We're like, holy crap, this is a great <clears throat> deal. We sit down with him. I'm freaking jacked. I'm like, yo, I'm about to get my, my video camera. It's going to be sick. And then we leave. We get back to the office. And maybe like the next day, we're like rolling through this menu. Like we had, I don't know, you can tell that part. Cause yeah, I was trying to set it up and yeah. I was like, why are there no, <laughs> like the video options were terrible. Everything was AVC HD, which is just a horrible, <laughs> no, 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 like no. just awful. And, I, and then I like turned the camera around oh. and it was just the A7, no. like the very first full frame mirrorless camera Dang. that Sony mm. ever came out with. Great for photos, but the video quality was terrible. And I remember we shot a project with it because we like had one coming up that we needed two angles oh, on. Yeah. And the, it was terrible. It was we so didn't even bad. use it. It was so bad. Yeah, I think we so. just like <laughs> sent this footage or something and then never talked to them again and moved on with life. Yeah, it was like one which of our is, first Which is funny because like now you guys are like, like gearheads. You know, with everything like sound, lights, cameras, like you know what you're gonna buy and what you're gonna. Austin's use it for. really the gearhead. He will <laughs> teach me about it, and I'm like, I love that, or I don't nice. love that. And it's actually been really great. He's yeah. like, dude, this came out, and I'm like, uh, it's okay. But then he's like, hey, dude, this came out, and I'm yeah. like, actually, that's kind of fire. <laughs> like we need that. Like the Pavo tubes. Like mm -hmm. when he told me about them, like they just make sense. They are applicable in every situation. Yeah. We need them. Like a hundred thousand of them. Um, Nanlite, shout out Nanlite. If you want to sponsor us, we wouldn't please seriously, please. <laughs> but we you love Nanlite so well. We're just gonna keep using them and keep buying them because we love them so much. But anyway, it's just funny that you you get so ex excited when you're building, you're growing, you want to buy the right. best new gear, and then you <laughs> you spend hundreds, yep. if not almost a thousand dollars or whatever yeah. on this T5, and yeah. it comes in, and you're uh, like, dang. So what did you do uh, with the T5, and how did you kind of go from oof. there? I so like that's probably why my video journey has come a little later in life compared to photo because like most people know me as like more photo photo guy that's mainly from that so i had the t5 and i was able to buy like a nifty 50 oh yeah let's go it's a great lens it it's is great it's, lens. i still use it's it sometimes fantastic honestly lens. So it was just mainly that for like portrait stuff. I uh -huh. started off doing senior photos <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> with embarrassment and shame. And I feel so bad because like they were, they were bad. Looking back at it and I was like, gosh, dude, like you can't, you couldn't frame. You did not pick the right location. The lighting is off. But like, I remember the first check I got from that was like 150 bucks. I was like, no way, uh -huh. bro. And then. Yeah, it's it's just snowballing from oh, snowballing from that moment. It's just like keep grinding, keep going, 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 going. Yeah. And eventually, I'm I'm here now, still grinding, still yeah, uh -huh. learning. Learning is the biggest part, honestly. Yeah, that's funny that you say that about like he has like all, all the information and research. You're like, yeah, that's good. I have to like, I guess it's something I have to learn to is like balance like those two sides of myself, mm -hmm. essentially being like two of you guys oh, yeah. like one person because yeah. like I just pre-ordered like a camera lens and a body but I spent like two weeks like convincing myself not to yeah, oh, share the sure. money yeah but then like another side was me just yeah yeah just do it oh for yeah. sure you know you're gonna use it just do it yeah yeah like, money is probably the biggest thing for the whole business aspect it's just like because like now I have like a I ordered a Venmo a debit card just mm -hmm. to have like a separate stash of money for yeah business away from like my food expense and sure, whatever yeah. else I need shoes and whatever else I need to buy. <laughs> nice. But like just having like almost a split personality between like business and levy. That's yeah. great. Has been something tough to learn because I can't be both if like in one person, if that's something that makes sense. Yeah. Like friends and family and stuff like that, I need to fully keep separate from mm -hmm. work. Yeah. So. 
That's great. I love that. So if you can't tell already, Levy is a full-time college student. Oh, yes. And also runs a successful freelance business. So how do you do that? (laughs) Don't cry. Cry is like, oh. (laughs) Well, luckily, I am a graphic design major and not like pre-med or anything like that. So my schedule is a lot more open than compared to like anyone else who might be watching the Mm -hmm. podcast or anything like that. Like right now I'm only taking 12 credits. You know, it's pretty open. Like right now, like I was able to skip class (laughs) (laughs) to do this podcast, (laughs) to come to the podcast (laughs) and just like, just look ahead into my schedule. That's the main thing is just trying to stay one step ahead in both academics and my business. Like if someone like tries to book me like two days before, I'll probably say no, just cause like, oh, I have class. But if you told me two weeks ago, I could have gone ahead in my syllabus, looked at my assignments and like tried to clear everything up. Like try to message my teacher like, hey, I'm not going to be here for a shoot. So yeah. it's just been time management, bro. Yep. That's probably another skill that I just had to really learn, especially balancing both. Time management mm. has been very, very key. And I, which is weird because like when I first got to college, I was very like go with the flow. Like whatever happens, happens kind of guy. But now it's just like everything <laughs> needs to be, have a structure yeah. for me to live like both personal and like <clears throat> camera. Yeah. Auto life because like it needs to be there yeah there was like a, a time last year where i slipped and i was like school was doing okay but like i didn't have any time for photo video stuff and like personal life just took over way too much and like my business suffered so now it's like even split yeah, yeah. i'm just trying to figure out that's good i think it's like a flexibility mm. within a framework is what i like to yeah. always say you have to really manage your time your time's going to manage you so for you like you can create those parameters and have that structure but there's you know, then there's wiggle mm-hmm. room within that. But if you don't plan anything and you just go with the flow, which yeah. is way my natural bent before I was married, before mm-hmm. we had a company, like I was like, I'm a spontaneous yep, yep, butterfly yep. and I can do whatever. Yeah. Like, and that only works for so long. If you're single, never yep. want to get married, never exactly. want to have a successful business, never really want to advance your leadership or growth. I mean, you're hitting all the all key that points, stuff. bro. That's so it. It's a, it's, it, I had a wake up call very much so. And I'm like, Hey man, I want my, my, marriage to be successful. I want my business to grow. I want, and with all of that, I want to be a better leader. I want to lead Mm -hmm. people better. I want to love people better. All that stuff comes with being able to manage your time, you know, um, well, so. It was like this one thing I heard is like, if you had 24 bucks or something like that, or $24,000 or something, like how would you spend the $1 or whatever? Something like that, something super motivational. It's like, like, you're right. I'm not going (laughs) to waste a dollar, which equated to like a minute. I'm not going to waste a minute of my day kind Mm -hmm. of thing. I was like, I'm just going to keep going at it. But then that led to like a rabbit hole of like watching Gary Vee and just like grinding too much. Yeah. Oh yeah. And like you burn out like weekly. So it's, that's been tough to try to learn too. It's just like manage time, manage well enough to where you can spread things apart and not just go hundred percent. Yeah. Waking up at 6am, going to bed at like one or whatever editing. Yeah. But I don't know. Yeah. Taking taking time to rest is, yeah. A key part of time management. Like <clears throat> time management doesn't just mean how many things can I fit in my exactly. day, but it's also when am I going to plan my rest? Cause you yeah. have to have it. Otherwise you yeah. will. Yeah. You're going to get burned out for sure. That's, that's something I'm trying to implement now is like, should I fully take weekends off so I can have weekends to rest? But then that will mean I only have like a certain number of hours through the week because of school and like mm-hmm. assignments right. and stuff to manage business. Cause most of my stuff now that I do is on the weekends. Mm. But with that, I don't have a weekend. Yep. This is funny because like I was talking to my girlfriend about like she doesn't want to work a nine to five. And I was like, well, I'm not working in a nine to five, but I'm working 24 seven. Yeah. <laughs> so like you got to choose what you want to do with your life. But yeah. I mean, it is a choice. Like I love what I'm doing and yep. I, I would not like take it for granted now. Just yeah. Like, I wouldn't uh, replace it for anything else in the world. So you've been doing this for how many years now? seriously about two or three two or three years um you kind of made a name for yourself a brand for yourself around the area and you've really done a little bit of everything Mm -hmm. i mean you really are passionate about sports but you've done weddings you don't senior photos you confessed Mm -hmm. (laughs) you've i mean you everybody starts somewhere right Mm -hmm. but um as you're in school full-time or you were and now you're kind of doing 12 credit hours and you're working on the weekends primarily Mm -hmm. you've kind of run into some really awesome opportunities so just kind of walk us through what those were and how they came about. Yeah, uh, those opportunities, man, have been game changers. So like one, 
the big one is like working with Jordan Burroughs. He's a, like an Olympic wrestler. He was in Lincoln. He just moved to Philly now. And like we're still continuing to work like with each other, which is very nice. But yeah. Just stuff like that. Because like, I didn't know who he was. Honestly, I had to look him up. Yeah. But like just big opportunities and honestly little ones too, just a balance of both. It's just like figuring out when to say yes or no mm -hmm. and saying yes most of the time, if that makes sense. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. like you just never know what you'll... Because like during the time for Jordan Burroughs, I had a summer job, like a desk job or whatever at school. And like he needed me for a week and I had to be like, hey guys, I'm not going to come in all of next week. And they're like, whoa, blah, 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 blah. So I had to get that resolved. And it's like, I'm going to go. Yeah. Like, I, it's not a question. I'm going yeah. to go. <laughs> yeah. Guys, I'm, I'm going to go. Yeah. Or I quit. <laughs> yeah. It's like, what are you going to do? Right. What are you going to do about it? Like, yeah. I'm going to go. So I was kind of just like having that like, like foot forward. Just like, I'm, this is it. Like, yeah. take the opportunity by the neck. Just like freaking strangle the heck out of it. And, you know, <laughs> just like grab it by the get horns em. and just go. Yeah. It's great. And like, that's, that comes from like my past. of kind of go with the flow and like, I love when opportunities like that arise because I'm just like, especially now because like it's been two years since I worked with Jordan and now just looking at it, like where we are now, we're like closer to friends than clients yeah. kind of mm -hmm. thing. And I'm like, God is good. You know? Yeah. Like, what, what the heck? I was 19 at the time. I just rewatched a video I made for him. I was like, that's not bad for a 19 year old kid. No, that's so great. And I would agree all the content that you've really done for him has been just insane. And yeah. I would say right up there with anything you see, that ESPN or, I mean, you know, any of the big sports right. networks, yep. the stuff, the graphics and the photos and the video stuff that you've made has been just incredible. So what, um, what was the opportunity that you shot for that week and, and just kind of break mm -hmm. down, like, what is the working relationship yeah. with him now? So that was in 2019 and there's this thing called Final X in Lincoln. And it's essentially who, like in America, it's like a tournament competition to decide who goes to represent that weight class for America mm. to like the world championships. Got it. Mm. I hope I got that right because I'm still learning about the wrestling world. Totally, yeah. But hopefully I got that right. <laughs> but it was a week long thing. He's like, I'm going to need like videos every day just leading up to the match and like a fully edited uh, like documentary almost uh, by the end of it. I, I got it done that week. Wow. Wow. Because like... Each day I was just like editing little snippets of yep. like a one minute episode of each. And I was mm -hmm. just like going at it, going at it, going at it. And it was like Sunday after everything was finished. And I just like put the, uh, put the finishing touches on it. I was like, here. He was like, huh? I was like, I was like do you want to split it in half? Because I kind of made it too long. He's like, what? It's like he, he only asked for 25 minutes. The whole thing's like a 50 minute cut. Oh, wow. nice. And then he watched the whole thing. He's like, I don't think we need to cut it. And that was like the day I knew it was like, I want to work with them. Yeah. It's like they, they fully trust what I do in my vision. Yeah. Oh, it's very nice. It's, it's a blessing. Cause like there's not, there's not friction in like the creative process at all. And it's very nice cause him and his wife, they're a very good team and they're both creative in their own ways. Mm -hmm. Not like creative, like us or like make stuff, but like they have very, very good ideas. Like most of the stuff we work on comes from them and it's up to me to like process and clear everything and see how we can do it on camera and stuff like that. That's but. so awesome. How did they find out? Or like, how did they find you? How did they, oh, how did you guys get linked up? I get, I get asked this question every time. And it's, uh, so back in 2019, we still have the feature. I don't know if we still have it on Instagram. The, it's, it's basically the For You page mm. on Instagram, the mm. Explore page. Yeah, Discover. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, yeah. Where, yeah. that's where he found me. Wow. Oh, wow. Randomly. Dude, that's like, so awesome. He was awesome. scrolling through it. And like back then I was like pushing, I do still now pushing like Lincoln, Omaha, Nebraska hashtags mm -hmm. just to hopefully integrate myself a little bit more into the area because I was still pretty new. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I was just using that for every post. And then he said he liked <laughs> like the way I edited my photo. But now I look at it like, no, dude, like I can do so much better. Like that I had a phase where everything was like super dark and whatever. But yeah. he liked the way it looked. And he hit me up, he sent me an email and said, hey, let's meet for coffee. And that's when I proceeded to look him up. And I was like, okay, I'm definitely meeting him for yeah. coffee. <laughs> I was like, yeah, uh, why would I say no? But that that's that's like one of the other things too where I knew it was like a godsend because like, bro, who looks at their explore page and finds Right. Because he didn't search my name. He didn't do anything like that. He just yeah. found a photo that I took and I was like, yeah. Because he could have so very, awesome. very much just like Googled up like exactly video company in Lincoln, Nebraska yeah. mm -hmm. and you would have been on the 50th page. Exactly. Because like he did a similar project the year before with like Lucas Miranda actually here in Omaha. But oh, yeah. I think they just couldn't link up on a schedule and he was also in Omaha and it had to be like a daily thing. So I mm. didn't think he yeah. 
connections. I don't know, driving back every day, so he just had to look for somebody else. And then I, the thing that shocks me the most, bro, is like he's the best in the world at what he does, mm -hmm. like top tier for wrestling. And he hires this 19 year old kid for his documentary that now I think has like 100k views or something like that mm -hmm. on his page. Sick. I st today I still can't believe it, dude. Like that's so great. It's very. It's very mind blowing to have like that much trust from someone who does something like in their own space at such a high level. Yeah. And like that's probably been one of my keen things of like pushing forward is like I have to keep up. Like, cause like this guy's at the top. Like, I got to keep my content up if I'm going to be that guy for him. So, yeah. That's so awesome. And I might be that guy for him, actually. Yeah. I might be moving to Philly. Ooh. Dang. You heard it here yeah. <laughs> first, folks. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> But, like, it's just stuff like that. Because, like, even now, like, we're in talks of possibly, like, moving me out there. I'm like, you guys still want to work with me? That's, that's like, kind of like the imposter syndrome thing. Like, you know 10 plus whoever, like, wrestling, wrestling content creators. I'm like, you still want to work with me? I was like, yeah, sure. Why not? Well, because you're freaking awesome. Yeah. That's why. That's something I just got to tell myself sometimes, too. It's like, hey, you are yeah. awesome. Yeah. You're doing good work. And like yeah. that reassurance from yourself. Because, like, I might hear from, like, my girlfriend, my parents, friends, whoever. But, like, at the end of the time, like, it's still, yeah. still got to come from inside of you like for that confidence, which is yep. yeah, we, tough to learn. We all struggle with that, I feel like, as creatives. Yeah. It's just you're always looking at other people. You're yeah. measuring against other people's mm -hmm. either standard or client or budget and you're comparing and yep. um yeah so just know like you do incredible work and more than that like the person that you are yeah totally is why a jordan burroughs linked up Thank with you. you and like is gonna potentially fly you out to philly to Dude, work I mean, for him full time yeah to touch on what you said like that comes from you guys a lot actually Cause like before that, I thought I had to be like super cool, professional business photographer, video guy. I and think then you like, saw us. No, I mean, <laughs> honestly, no, that's, that's one of the things like, I was like, oh, you can have fun and be yourself. Cause yeah. like before then I thought I had to be like a different person, mm -hmm. like act cooler, or act like more adultish or whatever. Yeah. Like act like I'm not 19 at the time. Uh -huh. And I shot a wedding with you guys or at least helped shoot yeah, a wedding, yeah. like carry on stuff. And I was like. They're really chill. Like you guys didn't show up in like a button up or anything. You showed up in like a t-shirt and shorts. And I was like, and like the main thing I took away from you guys and Trev, Trev and I like both implemented in, uh, into our business is just like, just treat everyone as like a human person. Mm -hmm. Like if like a bride needs a cup of water, go get a cup of water. Mm -hmm. And like the main thing I took away from you guys is just like learning that this business is like a, a business of service, mm -hmm. not cool photo stuff all the time. Like at the end of the day, you're serving somebody else with your talents. And I was like, I never thought about that. That's like awesome. That. And that's, I think that's been like the biggest game changer for my business, honestly. Wow. Cause like, that's the main thing that Jordan and I relate to is just like, yeah, I know he's going to, he can find easily find somebody else who can work a camera, but like, I know his family, I know his kids, they know me by name kind of thing. So like, mm -hmm. yeah, just serving people, people. Relationships. exactly you heard it here yeah so, yeah we're in a, a, a business of serving people and we talk about this all the time on the podcast but i think it's really valuable that if you don't love people and you don't love serving yeah. people go work somewhere else yeah yep. because it. it's not about you yeah it, it just really isn't exactly and uh it's really cool we're honored that we have got to Dude. at least help a little <clears throat> bit in the journey and um you've un inspired us um probably as much as we've inspired you and it's just been cool to, to grow together and to see what's going on, um, in your business and, and kind of checking mm -hmm. in and shooting together every once in a while. It's been awesome. Yeah. I mean, like you guys have been very good mentors to me over the past since 2017. And it's like, it's been this weird thing. Cause like, I just look up to you guys, but you're also homies at the same time. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, like you said, just seeing you guys grow to him, like, yes, <laughs> you go, you, but <laughs> Yeah, that, that loving people is so important to just, probably just any avenue of career. But like before photo, video stuff, my parents really pushed me to become a nurse. And I was like, listen, I don't want to be, but if I did, I could because I want to help people mm -hmm. like as a nurse or a paramedic or whatever. Yeah. Like I didn't want to go through the schooling. <laughs> sure. So that was like a, a thing I had to tie into what I'm doing now with the, all the business photo, video stuff is like having that same thing of like helping people. Like, that's weird because, like, nurses, my mom's been a nurse for so long, and like, she worked through the pandemic, and like, I just she'd come home, and I'm like, dang, 
like she looks exhausted. She, she was just helping people all day, like 24 mm seven. -hmm. Like how can I put that same service and helping people with a freaking camera? Yeah. yeah. Things, you know? That's so awesome. Good. Bro, you got a bright future ahead of you. Yeah, you Regardless do. if you move to Philly, if you don't, um, but uh, yeah, that's awesome. And just hearing, super inspirational to hear from someone who, when this happened, was a 19-year-old college kid. And mm -hmm. like what you just described to us is literally like a dream client. That's the yeah, stuff, th is. those are the types of clients that we all want. Mm -hmm. um, and there's so much to unpack in what you said about how that client interaction works. But yeah. um, for sake of time, we'll save that for a future episode. But um, is there anything else that you would like to share with our listeners? Um, how can we find you on social media? Where can we follow you? Ooh. Instagram, levyventura.photo is my main thing. If you just want to ever reach out, just chat about camera stuff, I'll probably reply <laughs> pretty quick because I'm on <laughs> it anyway. But yeah, that's my main social. Awesome. Yeah, we'll make sure to link that in the description below as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Levy, for being a guest on the show. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been an honor to have you, and we'll definitely have to uh, chat again soon. Yes. But uh, until next time, thank you so much for tuning in the Glory Boys podcast. Yeah. And we'll see you in the next episode. Peace. <laughs>